The Fourth Crusade was a Latin Christian armed expedition called by Pope Innocent III. The stated intent of the expedition was to recapture the Muslim-controlled city of Jerusalem. However, a sequence of economic and political events culminated in the Crusader Army's 1202 Siege of Zara and the 1204 Sack of Constantinople. This led the partition of the Byzantine Empire by the Crusaders and their Venetian allies, leading to a period known as Francocratia, or Rule of the Franks in Greek. And this is where my story begins. I am Michael Pylologos, the son of the Megas Domesticos Andronikos Pylologos by Theodora Pylologina. My dream is the reconquest of our beloved city, Constantinople, in the name of our Lord, to establish long-lasting supremacy of Pylologos emperors. Let's analyze the political situation we are in. John of Brienne, so-called the Crusader King, reigns in Constantinople as the false emperor. Greece is ruled by Catholic French lords who have nothing in common with the land and its people. Latin Empire should fall if we ever wish to reclaim our homeland and save Greek people. On the other hand, there are pretenders to the Roman throne still lurking in the shadows waiting for their chance to strike at Latins, such as bastard Lord of Epirus Michael II and Ioannes Komnenos of Trebizond. I should strike them down if needed. For now, they pose no threat to us. But the main villain of our chapter is Ivan Asin II, who see himself as the emperor of Bulgarians and the Greeks. He is a good soldier and administrator. But the Mongol horde closing in, and the winter is coming for him. Last but not least, Kaikusra II, stern warrior sultan of the Seljuks, threatens our realm with constant raids. The Turks started their Turkification of Anatolia, so we have to act quickly. In my power base of Bithynia province, I rule as the warrior ducks of the Nisian Empire. Like a true warrior, I will focus on military education. I will go with strategy focus in order to gain expertise in warfare and get the strategist title. This will give me an advantage when I go to war against the foes who have more soldiers than me. I will focus on quality rather than quantity. My first move will be relocation of my capital to Heraclea Pontica. It has farms terrain which is suitable for economic growth. We can build manor houses building chain in here, which will improve tax revenue drastically. Let's start by building one. Moreover, I will announce myself as the Ducks of Buccellaria in order to increase my prestige to attract more warriors and knights. Let's take a look at our counselors. We have a good set of people who are suitable for helping me to manage my domain. I will order my steward to oversee the construction process in my capital while my bishop fabricate claims on my neighbor's land. Also, let's improve our religious relations with the clergy. I will task my marshal with the training of my knights while my beautiful and intelligent wife take care of the economy. She is such a blessing due to her incredible skills in managing the realm. A new military trend is rising in the Western Europe. Heavy cavalries of the Western Army stand victorious on the battlefield over their infantry counterparts. We should catch up to that. I am expanding stables in Heraclea to increase damage and toughness of our heavy cavalry squadrons. Let's recruit a unit of Klebanophoroi Heavy Cavalry, armed with the finest pieces of armor from head to toe with completely armored horses. These men were the tanks of the medieval era. A Klebanophoros would have four layers of armor, Esoloricon, padded cloth Gambeson, then Loricon, male armor, then their main armor, Klebanian, Lamellar Cuirass, and over that, Epilorikian, quilted cloth Gambeson. Plus, they were wearing arm guards and greaves. 
Our region has three types of terrain, farmlands, plains, and hills. Therefore, our Klibanoferoi heavy cavalry is very useful due to attack value they get from farmlands and plains terrains. Attack power reduction from hills are minimal, so it shouldn't be a problem. Only issue I have with our heavy cavalry is their non-existent pursuit value. Therefore, I should cover this weakness by hiring mercenary light cavalries from Slavs and the Turks. Through shrewd diplomacy and show of force, I am able to place my brothers as the lords of Ionian coast and Lydia. By accomplishing this, my set of alliances is stronger than my lieges. Ioannes III is not a bad man, but he is not strong enough to reclaim our lost empire, therefore he must be dislodged. I will claim his title for myself. There will be a civil war if needed. Our realm needs a strong leader. Let's start the civil war. I am confident that I will be successful in dethroning my liege. I have a better army and strong allies. Let's assemble our troops in Tarsos and hire light cavalry mercenaries to supplement our army's low pursuit value. I will march directly on Nikaya to lay siege the castle. The enemy army has been spotted. Let's march west to meet them on the battlefield. Form ranks! Rally the horses! Infantry! Formation! Heavy cavalry! Attack them from behind! Victory is ours. It is time to lay siege to Nikaea. If we can capture it quickly, the civil war will end without much bloodshed. Be brave, men. Our courage and tenacity will win the day. Take the walls! Attack through the gate! Decimate their ranks! Nikaea is ours. With this victory, I can enforce my peace terms on my liege and become the new autocrator of Nicaean Empire. From my base in Heraclea Pontus, I will rule my realm. This is just a beginning, though. I will use Nikaea's resources as its autocrator to reclaim the Eastern Roman Empire. We should be careful, though. Latin Empire has absorbed the Duchy of Epirus, so we stand alone in our struggle against the Catholic princes. My first priority will be strengthen my grasp over the vassals. While doing that, I must be careful as I cannot weaken the realm within since there are foreign powers waiting for an opportunity to destroy us. Ioannis has been reduced to a mere count, but he still rules over the city of Nicaea. This should be changed as I must the most important city in our realm. To do that, I must revoke his titles. I already have claims on his lands, so it will incur no tyranny. 
Since he is weaker than me, he has no choice but to accept my demands. Let's increase our control over the city of Nicaea. I will order my marshal to go there and handle the task. Soon, our realm will be strong enough to take back Constantinople. I have solidified my rule over my vassals, as two of them are my brothers. It is wise to increase relations with powerful vassals and remove the disloyal ones. Sultan Chilbuk is dead. He left his throne to his ten years old son. The Seljuk Sultanate of Rum is at state of civil war. Their military capability is reduced, so it is a perfect opportunity to invade their land to take back de jure Nicaean lands. Let's invade Phrygia through Tarsos. Gordion is poorly defended, so it will be easy to take it. From there, we will invade the interior. Different factions within the Sultanate are fighting with each other as we invade their lands. We should be careful not to engage in battle with any of them. We don't want neither of them to be weakened, so the civil war continues as we capture more castles without any interference. The Sultan has mustered his loyal troops to prevent our invasion, but they are disorganized. Let's pick smaller armies one by one before they merge into a bigger host. He is trying to prove his worth by defending the country. However, our army is much bigger and stronger, so not only he will lose his lands, but he won't be able to defend his title against the other factions in the Sultanate. We have defeated the scattered armies of the Sultan. Now we can focus on capturing border castles. Let's start the siege of Dorylaeum. This is the location of a great battle. The Battle of Dorylaeum took place during the First Crusade on 1st July 1097 between the Crusader forces and the Seljuk Turks. Though the Turkish forces of Kilaj Arslan nearly destroyed the Crusader contingent of Bohemond. Other Crusaders arrived just in time to reverse the course of the battle. We have captured the northern border castles. Let's invade the southern Anatolia now. We have captured the border towns in the south in a year through our swift campaign. It is time to enforce our demands. We will take the de jure lands of the Nicaean Empire from the Seljuk Sultanate of Rum. This will solidify our rule in western Anatolia and remove the threat of Seljuks for now. Let's start expulsion of Turkish bays from our newly conquered domain. Moreover, I will send missionaries to convert local people back into Christianity. We will take back the rest of Anatolia after we remove the Latin folk from our lands. Also, I will grant titles of new lands to my brothers. I need to establish a strong reign of Pylologos in order to prevent future civil wars within the Empire. Plus, I can call my brothers to my wars, which I cannot do the same with my other vassals. Let's find suitable candidate from our dynasty to rule the southern Anatolian towns.
I will invite Alexios, my cousin to my court, to grant him the Duchy of Kibiraiotai. By doing this, I have added another loyal family member to my list of vassals. He will protect the frontier against the Turkish raids. Well, it is time to end our first episode. In the next one, we will make an attempt to take back Constantinople. Hopefully, we can defeat the armies of Latin Crusaders. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, like, and leave a comment below. See you in the next episode. Goodbye.